Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. In this one, I want to look at Gala Games. Um, we'll also, we'll actually, we'll start off uh, with Flair and Gala Games. Then we'll kind of move into um, um, kind of more the Gala Games side of stuff. We'll check out and uh, ask me anything in AMA from the um, from Gala Games. And then what I also want to do in the end is actually show you how to, how to um, I guess, start up and get into the game and 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 play it for a bit. Um, now, I, I understand that um, gaming is not for everyone, and because of that you might think, well, this video is not for me. Um, yeah, fine, that could be the case. Um, what I would advise, though, is watch the first part, just that you have an understanding of what um, what it is and what's happening. And um, the last part, when I actually go into the game, like if you have no intention in doing that, um, feel free to obviously stop there or, or wherever what i'll do as well is i'll put um kind of like i did with my, my earlier videos i'll put the timestamps in the uh, description as well so you can kind of jump to certain parts or if you want to come back and check things out it's just it will be easier to find it um all right so what i want to do here is i want to start off with um with the flare side of things and so basically I'm, I'm on my youtube channel what i want to do is i'm i'm kind of gonna f i guess look for additional income uh, where we can find it, uh, preferably passive, and um, I really like what fl what, what obviously the XRP and Flare and what all of them are doing. So I will probably start a lot of stuff from from that perspective. Now, um, first thing here, this is in a, an old blog from Flare, which I just want to run through with you, just to give you an idea of, of, of where we are. So, um, Gala Gaming, the dawn of gaming on Flare. Bitcoin was founded with the belief that prevailing economy uh, system gives too much power to the institutions that have formed around it. For too long, many of our economic and uh, commercial relationships have not given consideration that the end users, uh, and I'm actually just going to stop here for a second because what, what I probably think is, I, I highlighted in blue here, is there's a couple of words in this, in this, um, this blog that um, might be difficult, so I, I just want to kind of break them down a little bit. So, um, pejoratively means to express contempt or disapproval right so they, they obviously don't agree with this term here um so they're, they're termed uh, consumers right to consume something um which what flared obviously just does not agree with like the way it's always been now um so are themselves invaluable participants and and stakeholders in an ecosystem smart contract platforms are a tool to achieve swift and substantial uh, redress. Um, this means to sort it out, to correct this, to like fix the problem, kind of. Um, here, capitalism can thrive, but those who participate can have real and immutable stake in the system. So I'm not going to read this or the rest of this whole document. So it's too much. But I do want to run through the stuff that I've highlighted very quickly. Though. So. Um, I will add this in the description below if you want to read the whole thing as well. For me, I'm just going to pick out the, the parts that, um, that I think stand out. So in green, I, I put all the important stuff in green, by the way. So those who participate can have a real and immutable stake in the system. So which means that instead of just playing something, um, like I'm, I'm just going to say wasting your time. I know it's not completely wasted if you enjoy it, but I, um, you actually can can have a stake in the system, you can own stuff. So here you can see the principal drivers of profits reaped by developers and publishers. So right now, look at the, in the, say the old traditional way, all the money goes to the developers and the publishers. The actual players themselves don't get anything, right? So you can see that here, like they ra uh, rarely are able to fully reap economic benefits of their participation, which is unfair in my opinion, because you have the, the actually, the, the players create the, the whole network around the game. Um, and, and if you look at like the, say, online gaming, the e-gaming events these days, they are becoming well bigger than than, than a lot of sporting events. So um, like the players do mean, mean a lot more these days than maybe they used to. Um, next one up here is, this is what I think is really cool. So this is where we're moving to, right? So the, the assets that you own in a game that you bought or worked for belong to you and are yours to do whatever you want with. So this is where we're going to. And this is cool because imagine this, you play a game, maybe it's a car racing game and you start off with a, with a terrible, small, old car, whatever it is. And 
by winning and working and whatever you do have to do in that game, like you upgrade your car multiple times. Maybe you, you, you get all the way to the top where you might be driving, I don't know, like a Lamborghini Bugatti, whatever it is, um, up there, you, and you've earned that car. But now you've been playing that game for two years and they're better and newer games out now. And you want to go and play those new games. So what happens to all your progress in, in the old game? Like in the, in the old days, that would just be lost. You just put the game down and never pick it up again. And all the time that you, you put in is is gone and you have to start again in the new game. Now, what is cool if, if the assets that you've, you've unlocked, if they're NFTs that you own. So imagine this, you have that top car in that one game and you're finished with the game. Like you've played it enough, you don't want to play it anymore. If you can then go and sell that NFT to someone else within the game, and then you get money for that, that, that NFT. You then go in, go in and join that new game. And instead of stepping in at the bottom level, having to work your whole way up again, you can then use that money that you've earned from the previous game to buy. Um, may, I don't know, maybe you're, you're this time you're in, it's not a car game, maybe it's a, um, it's a shooter game. So you, you want to buy one of the better guns and you can kind of step in at a higher level or whatever, right? Um, so that's why you can kind of swap out of one NFT and into the other one. Now, there's another cool thing that's, that, that could be possible. Um, and I think that is something that, that Gala is actually looking into is that when you, um, like an NFT can be used in multiple games as well. So just, to, just imagine that you don't even have to sell out of it and then back into it again. You could just literally just, just it would have different functions in different games. So maybe you have, I'm literally making this up on the spot right now. So if it makes no sense, I apologize. But um, imagine having an NFT and owning one that just gives you 10% more power. Now in a racing game, maybe you drive 10% more faster. Maybe in a fighting game, you're 10% more stronger. But my point here is just that you don't have to sell and buy new stuff. You, just by holding that one asset, that one NFT in your wallet, it has different functions in different games. So that, that's also would be possible, right? So that's, I just want to kind of get your mind going towards where I'm, where I'm thinking here. But, um, but the cool thing here is that, that your work gets rewarded, right? That's the main thing. Now, and as a result, as you can see here, um, it will result in a much bigger gaming economy. Now, this is something that I also agree with. When people can actually earn a living, like properly, I'm not talking to sponsorships because you're, you're, you're part of one of the bigger teams in gaming, but like actual at home, like you'll be able to earn money by just playing a game. And um, when that's the case, it will obviously attract more people. Um, you obviously have people who try to, to to set it up in a way, just like in a real world, where they can profit off of a, a, the minimum amount of work and, and who knows what they'll be able to do. I'll get back on that later when we go into this game here in Gala Games because it actually you're allowed to uh, use scripts um, in, um, in, in uh, what's called Townstar. So I'll, we'll check on that later. Okay, for now, um, this is the main thing, right? So Gala Games are planning to integrate with Flare. And why I think this is very important is the following. Now, imagine this. If I told, if I gave you two examples of a way to make a make a hundred dollars, you could sell one painting worth a hundred dollars, or you could sell a hundred paintings worth one dollar. Right? In the end, both both of them would have um, have, have delivered you the same result of a hundred dollars. Um, now, this is the problem in my eyes, anyway, with Ethereum. Because the transaction costs are so high, like the time I'm not too worried about, like if it's three seconds or three hours in a game like, like this, I don't think it's that important um, because you're not going to change games and move stuff around like every day uh, if you have to wait a couple of hours. It, look, obviously it's not great. I'd rather have it faster, but I don't think that's the main issue. I think the main issue is the cost because when the cost of transferring something in, in the example that I just gave you is say ten dollars, then you've effectively killed the hundred times one dollar option. Now, it just doesn't work because of the transaction fees. Now that's what I think is currently happening on Ethereum. The moment, um, like Gala Games are doing here, when they plan or when they move over to Flare and costs are like a fraction of a penny, um, that's when it becomes really interesting because it now makes it possible for like um, really like low earnings still to make sense and be effective. So maybe you're not the best player in the game, but you might be the hardest working player in the game. So no, you might not earn yourself that hundred dollars in once once off every time, but hey, if you just put in the time, you, you might be able to get that hundred times one dollar and still still end up at the same level as, as the 
one of the better better guys. So I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, okay, I'm just gonna move down. So um, as you can see here, Gala Games, blah blah. Okay, minting of uh, Gala Games uh, related NFTs onto Flare. So obviously that will be there as well. Um, yeah, and this is what I was saying earlier, right? So a particular NFT could have uses in multiple games. Now, just this is the last part here of this article, I think. Yeah, or almost. Um, and then we can move on. But here, the key here is that the game assets, the NFTs, belong to the owner and only the owner. Hence, they can be bought and sold, used as collateral for loans, which I think is pretty cool as well, right? Imagine collecting uh, or earning NFTs in, in games and then using them as collateral to, to get a, a, like a loan in the real world, right? And you can do stuff with it. Um, anyway, so can you continue? Um, or to be wrapped into any product that one can wish. Instead of just being a car or an axe used in one game, like they are the real assets with potential for economic uses. We believe that such assets can be a way to earn money from enjoying gaming and could come from a, a major new use or could become a major new use case for DeFi. I completely agree. Um, now here, the first game released by Gala Games is Townstar and we'll take a look at that one now in a second. It is a deceptively simple looking but increasingly deep farming simulation in which the uh, builders or sorry, the user builds a farm to compete in weekly competitions. At various places, NFTs can be used in the game to provide bonuses that are not required to play, have fun, or compete. Now, I think this is very, oh, pardon, uh, very important here as well. I hate um, pay-to-play games. I just hate it. I hate the whole concept of it. It completely kills so many games. The same goes for mobile games where you have all these ads pop up and all this stuff. So you basically have to pay to get pay for the game because otherwise it's just not playable. I usually, at the moment I see that, I just delete the game. Um, so what I really like here is that you can go into Gala Games, play Townstar, and just have fun. Um, you can be terrible at it, <laughs> and it will, it, will, uh, it will still be fun to play. And I'll show you this in a while. Um, but if you get good at it, you can actually earn from it. Now, final thoughts. This is by Hugo, I think. Let me check. Yeah, it was Hugo who wrote this article. Um, as Flair works towards the launch of the network Gala Games will be releasing further information about integration and some fun and exciting ways for Flare users to interact with Gala, including competitions and special rewards. Now, this is what I want to, why I actually started to record this video is because what I want to do is prepare you before time, like ahead of time, um, so that you'll be ready that when this happens, because this part here for me was the most important part of this whole, whole document. When Gala Games is released on Flare, there will be ways for Flare users to interact and get special rewards. Now, I don't know what they are. No one, well, probably Hugo does, but like, we don't know what they are, but they might be uh, worth a lot as well, right? So it's just something to look at. Now, I think I've taken too long probably for this, this one page, so my apologies for that. And um, I wanna move on now to the next one, but this is kind of just wanted to dip my toe in, in, in the water and just start off with this one here, like Flare and Gala Games. Um, main takeaway from this page is um, cool things are coming. Um, let's have a look, closer look. Okay, so here we go. Moved over to the website, Gala Games, and um, you can see a couple of things here, right? This is just the standard. You can see up top right, you can see I'm logged in. Um, there's, there's a couple other things I wanted to kind of sh show you here. Uh, one is this. So, welcome, Martin Falk. Your balance is zero Gala, right? I don't have anything in it. My wallet is completely empty right now. Funny thing, I actually found this out yesterday, is I have a treasure chest here, and I have one item in it. I haven't opened it yet. Like, I know what's in it, but I haven't opened it yet because I just thought I'd do it here while I'm recording the video. Um, so I can show you. I have a, a 100 gala referral reward. I think, and I'm not completely sure, I think I have it up here as well. Like, there was a while back, I think it was in May, um, gala did, did two, they did two things. Give 100, get 100 program, um, which I don't think I competed in or, or joined in at all. Um, basically what they did is everyone who signed up got 100 gala and everyone who referred them got 100 gala. So that might be where I got it, but I don't think so. I think it's actually from this, the node referral system, but I'm not completely sure about that. Um, sorry guys, I had to put the mic, mic on mute there. I just had to, had to take a sip. My mouth is a bit dry. Um, okay, continuing on here. Um, as you can kind of see here, in the uh, the treasure chest, I have an item here in my treasure chest. It's going to view it. 
and it was a uh, hundred gala um, for a referral reward. Now I'm not going to claim this one right now. Um, I could do it right now, but like I have to pay the gas fees um, for Ethereum. Um, it's not that it's that's a lot, right? Eight dollars and forty four cents. It's more that um, right now I just, it just doesn't make sense for me to claim it. Um, okay, I'm just going to leave that there. Just know it's here as well. What I wanted to take a look at are, are, are two things. Well, one thing actually, the other one I'll touch on and then we'll move on and do that in a different video. One is nodes. So I'm gonna make a separate video about running a node on Gala um, because this is something that I really would like to do as well. And um, I think it's pretty pretty cool. You can you earn multiple things. You earn um, Gala with it, so the, the tokens. You also earn NFTs with it. Um, if you wanna have a look right now at the price, you can see it up here in, um, in Gala, in Ethereum, and in BAT. Now, just so you know, I believe it's every um, every 100 nodes that get sold, the price of the node goes up. So the longer you wait, the more expensive it does become. Um, it's somewhere around $12,000, I think, right now for a node. Um, but yeah, up to you. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this one in a separate video. For now, I want to dive back into here to the game. So. Poundstar. This is the game that I want to look at. Um, before I jump in and actually show you how it works, I wanted to uh, point out a few more things. So let me see. We've had this for a reward, so we can close that one. Um, I'll close that one. Okay, so onto the YouTube. So here um, you can see the uh, the Gala Games YouTube. Um, if we just go back two weeks, you can see this one here. So this is the Townstar AMA, so Ask Me Anything, with T. Elliot Cannon, Warren Marshall, and who else is in there? Um, Nina Desai. So this is one that I want to look at because there's a couple of couple of things that they said which I thought were very very cool. Now, here's the first one. Um, I hope the volume is is all good. Um, so there's I've got two uh, videos. This one is a little bit longer. It's about three minutes. Um, and then the second part is only one minute. But the reason I want to show you this is because of what they what they're discussing. The first part is they kind of explain how you can win rewards in, in Gala um, while playing. And the second one is about what's what's going to come. So let's have a have a listen here. Um, should we take some some questions from the community? Let's see. Let's see what uh, the town star players are interested in, in hearing. Uh, yeah. So the first question that that people tend to ask and this is something that you get anytime we have a game where there's some sort of rewards being given out um they're very interested in learning about uh whether or not the number of people getting rewards in any given week for the competitive server is going to be increasing i believe it's at 100 yeah, that's a, people right now yeah i'd like to change that man i mean i know we're okay. doing a lot of hardcore stuff right now it's very hard for people coming to the game to get in like the top 100 it's really really hard especially with the way that it is right now. I mean, it's it's a competition, yeah, that's great. It gives you some rewards. I mean, that's a fun goal to go after. It's pretty cool if you get in the top 10, but having some kind of reward for your effort is, is gratifying. And I think that's something we need to tone down a little bit and put more on the fun side. I mean, that's one thing about the May Mayhem thing I thought was extremely cool is the different, you know, there were certain plateaus that were like different levels. If you're trying to hit a certain plateau, you get a huge prize. I think we should mix it up a lot more often. I don't want to just have a situation where it's like, this is how you get the grade and leave. It should change around a lot. We should change it and find what's fun. So yeah, that's a great idea. I was talking about that earlier. There were some folks in Discord. I'm in there all the time. I just don't talk. Uh, the um, I'm listening. The, they were talking about that. A lot of new people come in. They're like, hey, uh, you know, what do you what do you have to score? To, how many stars you need to get to get a prize? What rank? And people, oh, it's a pin post. So that's where the information flow is. Like someone doesn't know, they start thinking about it. They're playing the game. They look at the game. They look at this leaderboard. They see their rank, you know, 1400 or something. And maybe they're working really hard and they get to 800. And they're like, am I going to be able to get faster here? I mm. just busted my, you know, butt to sell all this stuff. I only went up 20 point places. And so that whole mental travel point of trying to predict where are you, it's Wednesday. How are you going to do? How are you going to finish it? I think that needs to be a little bit more fun. Like, well, you know what? I may not get in the top 100, but I can get 450 pretty easily. Let me, oh, I'm at 465. Let me manipulate things to make sure I hit 450 the last minute. It's like auctioning something at eBay. If you've ever done that in the old days, you wait till the last second to put your last bid in. 
I think those kinds of things and it's also some right. random like target. It'd be neat to have a target competition where being number one isn't the person that actually wins. Like we give you a target number. I mean, there's all kinds of neat things we should try. Mm. I'm totally not against doing something that will make things more fun. And I think any designer that tries to say, well, it just needs to be this way and that's it forever. They're just narrow minded in a stick in the mud. I think you need to make things always change and fun because if it's not fun, it's going to tell you, right? You're going to go, you know what? That wasn't fun. We're not going to do that anymore. So that's the way I think about those kinds of things. A lot of people in the team want it to be that way. But the game right. hasn't changed much since May Mayhem because we've been heads down pretty hardcore working on a lot of really important things. And I don't like to try to spread ourselves too thin. I do like to go in there and hyper-focus on one thing really hard and make sure it's working really, really good. And then kind of take, okay, that's pretty much under control. Now let's go do this other thing. So yeah, that would be, I, I'm totally for that. In fact, it would be great to hear what people think would be cool because people that play the game like who are gamers like me, the, they have some of the best ideas. So yeah. Okay, so that was it. Sorry, I know that was a little bit long. Um, first of all, <laughs> um, peanut butter man peanut butter manifesto. Anyone? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, if you spread yourself too thin, shout out to Brad Garding House, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, so what I thought was pretty cool here is this. So currently, Gala Games, it's it's not easy to earn a lot of a lot of um, money from, from by playing because only the top 100 could play it so i'll explain the concept later a bit more uh, basically the way it works is there are weekly contests um, and you can start at any time in the week if you're late that's fine that's that's just up to you just have to make up for it or whatever but like um so every week there's a contest and at the end of the week the top 100 players um get rewards right um which i think is pretty cool but obviously as you, you heard now is that um, they actually want to move towards a more fun way of playing and that actually you get rewards for just playing. So that's why, once again, guys, I want to be ahead of time here. So um, just want to let you know that they, even though right now it's, it might be difficult, now is a good time to start because once you get to know and understand it, um, when it changes later on, um, you will be able to make some money with it. Now, he mentioned May, May, Mayhem, so I, I brought that out here as well. So this is kind of the, what, you, what you can see. And what they did here, you can see this is the top 500 players got got paid, and I thought this was pretty cool uh, at the bottom. So you you have player one got uh, ten ten thousand dollars in gala, and then it became less and less and less as you went down. But then like player 500 uh, also got ten thousand, so I thought that was pretty cool, um, keeping it fun a bit. And also here you can see stuff like this, right? So uh, for week one, um, he decided cake will uh, will award player. Uh, four times the points, but zero in-game dollars. You will need to work hard to tune your your town uh, for the cake game, or switch over to like blue steel or wine. Um, a neighbor de uh, delivery has been disabled for this competition. So, what does all this mean? I just got this other website here. It's called Townstar.guide. Um, you can kind of see here blue steel, cake, baguette, pumpkin pie, the wine, right? The Pinot Noir, um, steel, etc. Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and so on. But um, my point is this, you can kind of see here that like they all have different points um, they all need different things to build and um, it's kind of irrelevant for now. But just know that like I thought it was pretty cool that, that they are looking towards getting paid to play a fun game instead of just being the best at it. Right. So that's cool. Then the second part is this one. And this one is a lot shorter than the last one that I wanted to show you. This one is only one minute. I think one minute and two seconds to be precise. Um, this is more towards the future um, and they're not telling but by not telling they are telling if you know what I mean here we go listen up cool. one of the other questions uh, that a few people have asked and that I personally have is it would be very interesting to see Townstar uh, turn into a, a a a more robust play to earn type of game in the future where rewards can come in the form of nfts that are actually crafted and created during gameplay um which they can then go and do something else with or use in game next time um how do you feel about that as a general concept uh, i might tip my hand if i tell you what's working behind the scenes okay so, don't don't do that then okay Shh. Never mind. Forget that I asked everyone I had nothing I'm to do with that. Let's talk about sushi. Getting excited and Let's talk about sushi. Happening. No, no. Shh, shh. Quiet. We're talking about sushi now, Elliot. I want to drop some words. Okay. Don't, Persistency don't, is cool. Don't don't say words. No more words. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sushi now. They want to know about sushi rice, fish rice, or something. 
Yeah, okay. they want to know about sushi, right, fish, no, rice, and... Okay, so... Um, just wanted to show you that as well. Um, obviously, he isn't allowed to or he's not going to talk about it, but there's, there's some cool stuff on the way there as well. Um, okay, now... Um, very briefly, just kind of summarizing here, and then we'll move into move into the actual game, and I'll just kind of show you a bit how it works. Um, I think it's pretty cool that they are giving the power back to the actual players, and that you will be able to earn money by playing a game. Um, now, as I said before, like this might not be for everyone, but maybe you have some time to kill, and maybe you want to want to use it to, to play some games and you might as well make some money while doing it. So that's why I just wanted to touch on it in this video. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do, go back to the Gala Games website. I am now going to click uh, on play now and just show, kind of show you how it works. And um, yeah, I won't spend hours and hours obviously recording this, but I'll uh, show you the, couple of, the first couple of minutes just kind of give you an idea. Okay, so... I just clicked on I uh, clicked on change by the way, so you can see there's there's two types of servers. You've got the free one, uh, which does has nothing to do with the money. I think it's just free play with no rewards or anything like that. So if you just want to like mess around a bit, um, you can do that here in this server. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that because you can do exactly the same up here in the weekly competition. Now in the weekly competition, you can see there's currently about four and a half thousand uh, people playing. There's two days left, so there we go. That's the one that I'm sticking with, server weekly competition. And um, yeah, let's play now. So the first thing is, um, oh, by the way, you can probably hear the music now in the background. That's actually the game sound. So I will try and level it off that it's, uh, that it's okay, that you can still hear me talk. So here we've got the map of the world. Um, and you can pick any place you want to start. Um, I think most of my YouTube listeners are over in, in, the, in the States. Um, so what I'll probably do is I will move over there. Now, the game, um, ah, I was just wondering what happened there. It's searching for connection, there we go. Okay, we're back in. Um, let's have a look. There's a nice volcano here. Let's check it out. Okay, I'll pick this spot here. Um, is there a spot next to water actually? That might be a bit nicer. So as far as I understand, it's quite important to be close to people because it will be cheaper to transport goods. Um, next to the water is pretty cool because um, of water. Obviously that made no sense, but um, you'll see it now in a second. Okay, now, can't find a nice clear water spot cl close to a lot of people, so I'll stick to this one here. Place your town here, yep. Enter name, well, let's call it Volksville. All right, and here we go. Now, the first thing you'll probably see is not very uh, graphic wise, it's not amazing. And um, I'll just give uh, two basic tips. You're, you've got the left mouse button and the right mouse button. With the left one, it's click and drag, so you can kind of like move around the place. Uh, the right mouse button um, lets you um, turn. Right. Um, obviously, the scroll a scroll wheel lets you zoom out and in. Now you, you can see this is a square that I I have had chosen. Um, we couldn't get it right beside the water, so but it's okay. We still have other water here. Now, the aim of the game basically is to get as many stars as possible. You can kind of see up here. I have zero right now. You can also see that there's two days left in the competition. If I click on the cup here, you can see my position in the competition. Um, well. I have zero points, so I'll be somewhere around here in this list. The moment I start scoring points, it will actually point out properly where you are. Um, there's a clock up here as well. Now, let's go back into the game. So how do you get these stars? So the only thing that matters in this game, basically, is every time you send this truck away right, to, to sell stuff. So you can click on it. you got sell. You can click on sell. And then you can sell stuff you see i've currently got gasoline i've got wood and i've got wheat now you can only sell it in in batches of 10. so i could technically sell wheat and i could technically sell gasoline right now um then and this is why i thought it was important to be close to other other uh, villages is um is the cost it gets it is to um 
to uh, to sell stuff. So every time when you send your truck away, it, it, it costs petrol, right? And this is something that they, that is quite important because petrol is something you have a limited amount of, right? 40, it's stored here in the fuel storage. So I've got 40 gasoline. So every time this truck goes away, um, it costs me petrol. Now I don't have extra petrol. I'm not making it anymore. So when that's gone, that's gone. So that's one of the problems that we'll need to solve. We'll need to um, get petrol, right? Create something that gives us petrol so that we can continue to send. Because obviously if we run out, then we're stuck and that's the end of it. Um, right, so to continue on. So what you can see right now, I've got a house here. It's a farmhouse. I've got my farmer, he's over here. He's farming the wheat and he's uh, yeah, just walking back and forth doing his, doing his thing. Now, every if I click on it, you can see the farmhouse, the worker costs $10 per minute, right? So you can see that up on the left here as well. Um, it's the, um, this is like a countdown circle. So whenever this goes, is down to zero, um, this will be charged. Um, I also have another worker here. This, this is a builder house. This is $20 per minute. Um, so and the more and more people, like the bigger your, your, your village becomes, the higher these charges will be, become as well. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. Another thing is when you click on an object and you want to remove it, you can see it here, it's quite expensive to remove stuff. Um, depending on what it is, right, the price is different. Except for uh, water, if you remove water, you can actually see, see the color here is red from the, like the 40,000 is in red. If I click on say the, the water, it turns to green, right? So if I remove the water, I actually um, get $5,000. Now, when you remove water, you have to be very careful of your decision or think about it because um, you need it. It's very handy. And I'll show you how in a second. Um, and I'm talking about the, the, the big, uh, the ponds. You've got the, the marshes on the side. They, uh, they're still handy-ish. But uh, removing them does cost money. So that's kind of it now. So what do we want to do? We need to build stuff. We need to get production going. We need to start earning points. So I am going to focus on um, sugar because sugar has a decent price in the beginning. That's quite acceptable. Um, good thing to know. If you look at the marshes, so they deliver water to everything that's like one block around them. If you look at the, the ponds, they deliver water to everything that's two blocks wide, right? So a, a larger area. Um, so if I was to take this one here, you can see that it's affected by this one, this marsh here, this marsh here, but also by these guys here, right? Um, so why is that handy? Well, if I click on it and I go to the shop and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click on, so I want sugar, sugar fields, sugar cane. Um, give it a, a bit of more information. So like every couple of seconds, it delivers sugar cane. Now the output depends on, on a lot of stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. And um, for now, I'm just gonna buy it. And I've got a sugar cane field here. Now, it's being constructed and now it's ready. And you can see right now it's starting to grow sugar cane straight away. I think it needs like seven or eight water. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but because of my location, um, the farmer doesn't have to get water from the well and bring it over and dump it here. Like it just grows automatically because of the location that I've chosen. Now I'm gonna, same goes for here. This is another great location. So I'm just gonna put it here as well. And um, because, and um, start that up here, because of um, like the blocks around it and the marsh around it, I can't really build stuff directly beside this water without, um, without removing things and removing stuff is very expensive. However, if I was to remove say um, this part here, which I'm gonna do, I will get $5,000 um, straight away. So let's do it, yeah. Now the reason I have done it is because now I've created another great spot f to grow stuff, right? Without having it having to get watered again because it's connected with enough, enough places. So let's put another uh, sugar cane field here. All right, and you can see now as well, the, the farmer started to come back down and, and pick up that sugar cane. So where does that go? No, the sugar cane gets stored in the silo. However, the silo right now is full. See, 20 wheat out of 20 spaces. So I don't want that wheat. I want, it, I want the wheat gone. 
Now you could see as well, <laughs> because the farmer had nowhere to put the sugar cane, he just um, destroyed it. Like he'll do the same here now with the wheat as well. So because this is full. So what I want to do, I want to get rid of the wheat. Just because I'm not planning to, to grow this. I'll get rid of it there. And the sugar, the, the wheat that I have here, I'm going to sell it. So wheat, sell it. There you can see the um, truck gets filled up. And off she goes. Now you can see we've now, by doing that, freed up uh, 10 spaces here, right? So that 10 spaces can then be used for the sugar cane, which the farmer's getting. Now, obviously one guy here running the whole farm is, um, is not the best. Um, so let's build another house, just to speed it up a little bit. So farmhouse, another one. What you can see is that this will, this will increase here as well when this fin is finished, like the, the the cost, the labor cost, I guess. Um, you can also see that right now the um, the builder has come out of the house and is now starting to build this. Uh, build this right here. Um, let me continue. Okay. There you go. Farmhouse and the extra ten dollars per minute. You can see it's up here added in the top left corner now as well. Okay, so now we've got two farmers collecting stuff. Um, it's nice to get sugar, but here, actually, let me, um, I wanted to, I wanted to go into to show you stuff, but I can't because it's the, I have to wait for the truck to come back. And um, now you can see here, the truck will be back top right corner. You can see that here in 15 seconds. And then we'll also get our first points from our previous sale. Let me just wait 10 seconds and, uh, we can show you that. Perfect timing for me to take a sip. All right, here we go. Truck's coming back. If I click on this now, you'll see I have earned some money, which has been added up in the top left, and I've got my first points. Now, if I click on the points board here, um, you can see, where's my name? Um, no, it should be, oh, there we go. I'm in position 4,156. Um, however, look here. So if I click on the truck, I click on sell, you can see that wheat was selling for 3,000 per 10. Now, if you look at sugarcane, sugarcane is for f selling for 4,000 per 10. So obviously, that's why we've made the choice to go with um, sugarcane instead of wheat because you earn more. Now, I'm going to send away this truck again just to get rid of the wheat that we had. So off he goes. Um, however, sugarcane is is not like the final product that I want to sell. I want to sell sugar. So if I, um, I'm going to click here, scroll down, and get a windmill. All right, you can see we can afford it with the money that we've earned. So here we go. Get our first windmill in place. Um, when this is finished, a windmill uh, windmill will allow us to. Um, um, turn sugar cane into sugar, which you can sell for a lot, lot more, which I'll show you in a second. And um, for now, obviously that's getting built. Uh, we will need a place to store the sugar as well. So let's do that as well. Let's get, um, what is it called again? Um, I'm not sure if it's a storehouse. I don't think it's a storehouse. It's called... Not the warehouse. The warehouse, I think, is for like electricity and stuff. I'll check that out in a second. What is it called again? Um, ah, maybe it was a storehouse. So we need 20,000 uh, 20, uh, in order to place a storehouse. Um, so we don't have that right now, so I'll have to wait, which is fine. There we go. Our wheat just came back. Um, what we also need is more wood. So we'll have to get a um, someone chopping some wood. So let's get the lumberjack going right here. Oops. 
off he goes. Obviously, you can see as well, like he's quite expensive compared to a farmer. And you can see on top left again now, every uh, every time like the, the the price increases. So now we've got our lumberjack working away gathering wood. Like you can see, he'll keep it here in the woodshed. Um, farmers are working away grabbing us some um, some sugar cane. Now, when the sugar cane hits um, ten, we'll sell that again, and then um, hopefully this one will almost be finished as well. Yeah, so. It, a bit more wood needed here. What I want to do in the meantime is, um, I think we'll probably get some more farmers going. Let's do that. So there's the windmill. Okay, so first of all, before I get any more farmers, the windmill's finished. So what you can see with the windmill, I can click here on craft, and then you can choose what it is that you want to create. So we're going for sugar. So I will. Uh, select make sugar so six sugar cane and three wood is needed and now they'll start producing uh, sugar um, that's fine you can keep going I'm just waiting there we go let's sell some sugar cane it's still nine <laughs> because he, he He's, um, he just took one right before I was ready. Okay, while we're waiting, let's get that farmer extra farmer house. So um, houses, you, you can see here, must be placed near a road. So the first thing I want to do here is build a dirt road. Get a house going beside it. Oh, finished first. Get the house going beside it. There we go. Um, I am also going to get rid of this pond here, just to get some extra money. There we go. Um, I, I'm just going to leave it for now, the rest, because I um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it in a second. Um, actually, do you know what? Uh, I'm not going to play this game too serious anyway. I just want to show you stuff. So I'm just going to sell both of them, just to get some money so we can speed up the process. Okay, now we can see we've got enough. So now let's go in here. Let's get our storehouse down. So that's there. You can also see in the meantime, the windmill almost has collected all of the sugar cane. Extra house is ready. Now, what I can tell you about this game, anyway, it's it's fun. It's quite addictive. Um, I don't think I'll be playing it too much right now. I'm going to wait for them to change a lot of the stuff. Um, I don't know. Like, if you want me to do like a proper like tutorial, or if you want me to um, like sit down and, and plan out a tactic how you can rank up as fast as possible through this so that you can earn let me know i'll happily do that and um, for now i just wanted to show you kind of the game what it's like um there's a lot more to it obviously than i've showed you right now but basically the aim of the game is to um keep producing keep selling and um, keep upgrading because like say in order to get like petrol you'll need like petroleum and you need crude oil and then you need like all this other stuff right so you, you have to keep on upgrading 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 all the time which is pretty cool um and then to start climbing the ranks now i think this is all i want to show you here today like i can play this game for for longer but it doesn't really add i think to the video so for now um i just think we should stop here um let me know what you think i think the the main thing of this here today was just to dip your toes in and um, just have an idea of what's coming and know that um yeah, making money with games is actually becoming a thing, like properly. But guys, I am going to sign off here and uh, catch you in the next one. Oh yeah, by the way, actually, before I do, I almost forgot. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, check out my Patreon. I will add the um, the link down below. Um, that way you'll have a say in like what I create videos about and all the Google Docs, the sheets, the PDFs, all the stuff that I continue to create. Um, I will all upload them there. So. They all, uh, if you're in my Patreon, you all have access to everything. 
Um, that's it. All right, guys. Thanks, thanks a million, and catch you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.